we have our models, we have our views, and we have our view models, but we still don't have an application that really does anything. So what are we missing? Well, one thing that we're missing is commands. So if we run this application and we click our buttons, they don't do anything. So we need to implement commands to handle those button clicks. And we kind of set this up when we created our view models. So for example, our make reservation view model has two commands, a submit command and a cancel command. And those bind to the submit and cancel buttons on our make reservation view. So the MVVM infrastructure is there. We just haven't created and initialized these commands in order to handle those button clicks. So before we create all these commands, I do want to say that I am covering this as a separate concept, but you can really consider this to be in the view model layer. So if you had to put it into either model view or view model, it would be closer to view model. But anyways, let's create these commands and we're going to create a new folder on our project for commands. And similar to how we had a view model base to handle some basic functionality that's going to be shared between all view models, we are going to create a command base to scaffold out the basic functionality of commands. So class command base. And the most important thing that all commands are going to have to do is implement I command. So that is an interface. Let's import that and implement that interface. And the UI is going to hook into this interface and use these methods and listen for this event. So can execute. This is a method that tells if the command can execute. So if this returns false, then the button on the view will be disabled. And then whenever the value returns from this method changes for some reason, we do have to raise can execute change. And then the UI will re-execute this method to determine if it can execute. And lastly, and arguably most importantly, we have this execute method. So whatever we put in here is what's going to be executed when we click the button that this command is bound to. But this is our command base. So we're going to implement these methods in whatever is derived from command base. And we'll just have the basic default functionality on this command base class. So I will make this abstract. And then anything that inherits from command base will have to implement execute. So this method will be abstract. We'll also allow derived classes to override can execute. So we'll make this virtual. And by default, we'll just set can execute to always be true. And then lastly, we'll have a little helper method. We'll make this protected. And this method will just give us a clean way to raise the can execute changed event. So we will invoke it, passing this as the sender and just some empty event args. So now with this infrastructure, we're now ready to implement our first command. So back in our commands folder, let's create our first command. This is gonna be for submitting a new reservation on the make reservation view. So I'll call this the make reservation command. And this will inherit from our command base, which we just created. So to inherit from that, we are gonna have to implement the abstract class. And that just means we have to implement this execute method. So as you can see, since we have this command base that we inherit from, it makes our make reservation command a lot easier to implement. All we have to worry about is implementing this execute method. All of the other stuff is handled in the base class and we can override it if we need to. So for now, we're just gonna put a breakpoint here and make sure that we do get in here when we set up this command. So back in the make reservation view model, let's initialize our submit command to be a make reservation command. So import that namespace. And let's try this out. So we click submit and there we go. We get into our command. So now we've handled this button click that happened on the UI and now we can do whatever we need to do. So we need to make the reservation. And this is where our model comes in. So back to our model, we haven't been here in a while, but we have our hotel and using our hotel, we can make a reservation. So we're gonna need our hotel in the make reservation command, but really we need to set up a hotel for our application. So we're gonna set that up in the app.xaml.cs. Let's create a hotel that we'll use all throughout our application and we'll initialize that in the constructor. So not get it passed through because that's not possible. Just initialize a hotel and the hotel's name will be Singleton Sean Suites. I like that name, lots of alliteration. But anyways, we have our hotel. Now we just need to get it passed into our make reservation command somehow. So we are gonna take that through the constructor. So get a field for a hotel, import that, generate the constructor. And now just gotta pass in a hotel when we initialize this command. So where do we do that? That is in the make reservation view model. So we're gonna need a hotel through here as well. And then we can pass that in. And now when we initialize our make reservation view model, gonna have to pass in a hotel there as well. So get that through the main view model constructor and pass that to our view model. And finally, 
we initialize the main view model in the app.xaml.cs and that is where we have initialized our single hotel and we'll pass that to the main view model. So now back in our make reservation command, we have access to our hotel and now we're ready to make a reservation. But this takes a reservation, so we're gonna have to create one of those. So just instantiate a new reservation and this requires a room ID, a username, a start time and an end time. So how are we gonna get that data? Well, we know that that data is on our make reservation view model. So we got the data here now we just need it in our make reservation command so if all this data is on our make reservation view model we need to just pass the make reservation view model to the make reservation command so let's do that add a parameter to the make reservation command now we got our view model in here let's import that and put that into a field and now here on the make reservation command we just get all that data so we're gonna have to create a new room id with a floor number but the floor number that's just on our make reservation view model the floor number that the user typed in and the room number also on the view model. So just grab that property. We also need a username that's on the view model. How convenient. We need our start time that is on the view model too. And lastly, we need our end time which is on the view model as well. I know I do call these properties start date and end date, whereas the reservation calls them start time and end time. So maybe we should update that for consistent naming. But for now, they are the same types, so all should be good. We got a reservation, and now let's pass that to the make reservation. So let's try this out. Uh, I should probably set default values for the start date and end date, because right now, this is like year one. So it would take us a while to get to 2021, but it'll work for now. And let's submit this. And there we go, we got our reservation. So if we look at that, that is indeed the data that we put into our view. And now step over that and our hotel has a reservation. That's great, but let's try and create that reservation again. So let's step over that and we should get our reservation conflict exception. So we're gonna wanna handle that real quick. So if we go back to our command, let's do a little bit of try catch in here and we're looking for the reservation conflict exception, import that, move our make reservation into there. I have this exception documented, so that's nice. I know what I need to catch. And for now, we'll just throw a message box up and we'll say this room is already taken. And we also want this to be an error message box. And for now, we're just showing a message box for this error, but in the future, we'll go over different ways to show errors and messages because message boxes are kind of ugly, but we are also gonna show a message box if it was successful. So this will be a successfully reserved room and this will just be an information text box and we'll set the caption to success. And actually before we test this out, let's set some default values for the date time. So for the start date, we could just do date time dot now, but I'm just gonna do January 1st and 2021. And then for the end date, we'll do January 8th 2021 so by default it'll be one week and let's submit that reservation and we get the message box let's submit it again the room is already taken because we just created that reservation but let's change our dates around and try this again there we go all good so another thing we might want to look out for is that we could have our end date be before the start date so we'd have to add that validation to our model layer might have to look into that but for now the functionality we want is there and our command is looking good so this is post recording, but one thing I do want to cover is can execute. So I mentioned that if can execute returns false, then our button will be disabled and we won't be able to execute the command. And then whenever can execute changes, we're going to want to raise the can execute change event. So I want to go over actually using both of these and a good place to use that is our make reservation command. So for example, I would want can execute to return false if the user hasn't entered a username yet. So that is exactly what we are going to implement. So let's override can execute and we'll still call the base can execute just in case we ever implement anything there. But we want to check if our make reservation view model has a username and we want to make sure that that username is not null or empty. So we can use is null or empty there. And then like I had mentioned, just call base can execute as well. So if we run this, we will see that our make reservation submit button has been disabled. So let's start typing a username. And as we can see, the submit button does not become enabled, even though we have a username. And that is because we do need to raise can execute changed because that's exactly what happened. Our can execute result has changed because now the username is not null or empty. So can execute would return true. So in order to raise can execute changed in our command, we're going to have to figure out when the username changes. And we know that changes whenever on property changed is raised for the username property. So what we can do on our make reservation command is subscribe 
to property changed on our view model. So we'll call this handler on view model property changed. We can move this down here. And what we can do is check if the property name that changed was the username property. So we can do a name of and pass in the name of the make reservation view model username property. And if the username property did change, that means the view has to requery this can execute method because our username has changed. So we're gonna raise can execute changed by calling on can execute changed, which we defined on command base. So now put a breakpoint here. And if we change our username, there we go. We're gonna raise can execute changed. And now our button has been enabled. But if we do change any of these other fields, we do not hit the breakpoint because those properties are not the username property. So we do have to make sure that we update this depending on what properties we depend on and can execute. So for example, I might also want the floor number to be greater than zero. And now that I depend on the floor number property, I want to raise can execute changed whenever that property changes. So I'd have to update this if statement. So if the property that changes is username or floor number, I want to raise can execute changed. So here we go, breakpoint, change the floor number to one. And there we go, we hit our breakpoint. And now our button is enabled, whereas if it's zero, our button is disabled. So that covers the make reservation command. The other commands we have in our application are the cancel command. So if we're making a reservation and we decide not to submit it, we have that cancel button next to it. And really what I want cancel to do is navigate back to the reservation listing view. So gonna be some navigation, which we haven't implemented yet, and we're gonna implement a little bit later, but we can at least scaffold that command out. So let's create, I guess I can just call this the cancel make reservation command, inherit from command base. And for now we have nothing to do because we have not set up navigation yet, but we can at least initialize this command to be the cancel make reservation command. So that covers all the commands for the make reservation view model. So let's head over to the reservation listing view model. And for this, all we have is the make reservation command. And let's change our UI to show the reservation listing view so that we can see what the button is that binds to that command. So this is the reservation listing view model now. Again, we have not set up navigation yet. So just gonna have to hard code this and update our main window to be the reservation listing view. So what I want this make reservation button to do is take me over to the make reservation view. So again, this is navigation, which we have not implemented yet. I keep saying that we got to implement navigation ASAP, but for now we are going to scaffold out this command and this command can really just be a general navigate command because really all we want that button to do is navigate us to the make reservation view. So scaffold out this command, extend command base, implement the class. And for now, just leave it as is. And lastly, initialize the make reservation command to be a new navigate command, which we do successfully execute. So we have implemented our commands. The last thing I wanna mention is that all of our commands are implemented as classes. Another common way to implement commands is with something like a delegate command or a relay command. You might see that a lot, but I do prefer class commands and I go over the differences between class commands and delegate commands in another video which I will link. But now we have our commands in addition to our models of views and view models. So now we can handle user interaction. And quite clearly, now we just need to implement navigation so that we can bring our application together. But anyways, commands, definitely a fundamental part of WPF MVVM applications and are definitely something that you'll be using in your own applications. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.